Well, that was one way for the group stages to end, wasn't it? <laughs> group F? Nah, more like group F. Fucking hell, that was an intense orgy of fun. But it's time for the Euro Fantasy Round of 16 Team Selection. Where are ha boysies? I will be putting my flexing boots on for a second, yeah? And reveal my current overall rank because I'm somehow doing pretty well, eh? <laughs> but first, a little rundown of how we got there. So in match day one, I scored 75 points. Eh, not too bad, right? Not the worst of stats, yeah? And then in match day two, where I used my limitless chip, a limited budget free hit team, I only scored 60 points, less than when I had a budget and knew who was starting. Um, I am mad. <laughs> and just now in match day three after wildcarding, I scored 87 points. Way! Hey! Nah, how was my worst match day the one where I had unlimited budget? Now that is what you call a lucky. But that means the total points I have scored is 222. Two! Making my overall rank in the world, oh, 1,452 hey! Ah, oh, see ya! That's not too bad, is it, lads? Yeah, happy with that one. But guess what, guess what? That first place is in my sights. I'm ready to pounce on it. Woof! But I do just want to say before I move on, just because I've done well so far, uh, doesn't mean I've got all the answers, right? Like, you might think a specific player is going to do really well, and I say he's going to do terrible. Uh, you can still back yourself, right? Like, even though I'm in the top 2,000 and you could be 4 million in the world, you cheeky scrub. It still doesn't mean that I'm gonna get everything right, right? But no, I'm not just saying that just in case I don't get it right, right? Just to cover my own back. I'm saying it because it's just facts, you know? We spit in facts and that's what we do here. But this week for the round of 16, we do in fact have unlimited transfers to look at. So I will be chinwagging with the best strategy, strategy to go for for the rest of the tournament. Also looking at each team on each side of the bracket and also how to create the best fantasy team for this week. Uh, so first, let's have a browse at who's having a bit of a fisty cuff and who is playing who. God, I sound like an owl. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> We're on the left here. We've got the left side of the bracket. And on the right, we have the right side. But this bracket splitting is actually much more important than you might actually think in the fantasy. Because let's say you really think Belgium and Portugal is going to be an absolute goal fest, yeah? You get in Ronaldo, Lukaku, De Bruyne, and Jota. And boom, 4-3 Belgium. All of your players have scored a goal. You get all the points. Well, hey. But wait, you also think Italy have amazing, amazing defense, right? Like the clean sheet against Austria already confirmed in the bag, yeah? So you get in a triple defense for your team and they keep the clean sheet away. Hey! But wait, it's not actually all sunshine and rainbows. We're now going into the next round. You might have two Portugal players who have been knocked out and also a double Belgium attack against your triple Italy defense. Oh dear. <laughs> and remember, going into the quarterfinals, you actually only have three transfers to look at. So you've got to make sure you don't force yourself into ones that you don't really need to make. So point one, pay attention to who will be playing who, not just this week, obviously, but also next week and later on down the brackets as well. But also, that's not to say don't back players with good fixtures this week because they might have a bad one next week. You just need to find the right balance to go for. But it's not actually over there yet, lads. Well, let's say you think the best goalkeeper pair to have is Donnarumma and Lloris. Oh yeah, fair play, fair play. Play. Both great goalkeepers, right, and have great potential of those clean sheets. Where if they both keep winning and go all the way through, they won't actually meet each other till the semi final, so it's fine, right? You can just rotate them in and out to get all the clean sheets, yeah? Wrong! Where in the quarterfinals, the team on the same side of the bracket will actually be playing the same physical day, even though they're not playing against each other. And you won't be able to sub one of them out as they're kind of playing at the same time. So that is point number two. Pay attention to what side of the bracket your players are in going into the quarters and semi finals, as this will massively affect potential substitutions, especially goalkeepers, but also remember captaincy is going to be a big thing later on as well. So remember, we do also have to look past the round of 16 as well as targeting the easier fixtures this week, where again, another reminder you'll only have three transfers going into next week so you don't want to force yourself into moves you don't really want to make where if you do it wrong you could end up with like five players that would not be very good no 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 <laughs> and finally the favorites for each round in the round of 16 are these which obviously uh, doesn't guarantee who will actually win, right? It's football. Unless you do have one of those shiny magic crystal balls uh, which you can tell us the answer right here. Yeah. But maybe you should try and follow this because most people are probably going to try and follow this. And it's probably not the best of idea to maybe double or even triple up on teams that are very much expected to go out. So no, don't do that. But also remember to potentially cover yourself for different scenarios because even if you go very heavy on the teams that you think are really going to win, if they go out, then oh dear as well. So make sure you just get that right balance. So that is actually the Bacon Boy tips done for the day. And enough being like a podcast keys. I've been talking for like an hour already, haven't I? Uh. And let's actually get on, shall we? And use what I said to showcase my current team selection. Where the goalkeeper pair I've gone for, it's Donnarumma and Stecklenburg. Mr. Donner Kebab has kept three clean sheets in the three games so far for the Italia. And he 
also plays Austria this round, so guaranteed clean sheet income in. While Steckenberg has kept two clean sheets so far this tournament, who is playing the Czech Republic next. So not only are these keepers quite likely to keep a clean sheet in the next round, they are also on different sides of the bracket, so no matter on later on, if they manage to keep on going, they won't ever be playing on the same day unless they both get to the final. So even though the rumour might play Portugal or Belgium next, Stecklenburg will be there playing either Wales or Denmark if he gets through, so we can have an extra chance at the goalkeeper clean sheet in there and just subbing him out when we need to. Lovely. But also goalkeepers are probably the position I really don't want to focus my transfers on next week or so, that you know. So I feel like these two are probably Probably the best short term and also possibly long term as well. Not only for points now, but also going all the way to the final where he. But the solid brick wall backline I've gone for are, are these. Where we've got the Benjamin Baguette Pavard, Spin Your Jaw, Spinazola, Mr. Denzel Dumfries, Go on, Gossans, and Mill. Pavard being the cheaper and more guaranteed starting attacking defender for the France who not only should beat Switzerland, but you know, our France should probably go quite far. Spinazzola plays Austria, making a double Italian defence here, because of how good they look, like very, very good, yes, yes, yes. But also he has big boy attacking potential as well. Dumfries being one of the top scorers in the tournament, and I'm not talking about fantasy, and he's a defender, like what? But the fact he plays Czech Republic this week, and is on the easier side of the bracket, oh, it's beautiful, man. Gosens is also a very attacking fullback. No, 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 I swear he doesn't even know how to defend, he just stays up the pitch. He's a winger, like. <laughs> but he does actually have the toughest fixture out of any of my players here playing against England but the winner of England versus Germany will actually have a much easier next game playing either Sweden or Ukraine uh, no disrespect but it's just facts you know so I feel like it probably is a good idea to risk it so if you had to go for one of them I decided to go for Gosens because he's the most attacking one where even if he does lose an England win like 3-1 Gosens could still get me some points so we're hey and then finally Mail. I probably made a right meal of pronouncing his name but there we are but he showed us all the attacking potential he can have scoring a goal in his last game but also Denmark defence even though they haven't kept the clean clean sheet yet are still looking pretty damn good not letting that many shots in so could get a clean sheet year against Wales. Now if you notice here not only do all of these defenders have very very good fixtures right now and also potentially after if they go through but they are all also very very attacking fullbacks as well. So even if things don't quite go to plan they can still get me some points with some attacking returns as well or better yet get the clean sheet get the attacking returns and go through to the next round hey amazing. But now we move up the field to the midfield where all the juiciness can happen. Where right now I've gone for the where we've got the sexy ginger lad, and Kevin De Bruyne, the meatball loving man, Forsberg, Pablo, uh, who are you, Sariba, Dominico, the donkey, Bradi, and damn son, Damsgar. Kevin De Bruyne will be playing against the Portugal, uh, not the easiest of game, right? But also has created the most chances out of any player in this tournament, and he didn't play the first game, and he didn't play the first half of the second game. Wow, he's good. <laughs> but I do also think it's going to be a massive goal fest there, so even if he doesn't go through, all the points for me. Then we've got the Swedish Forsberger, who has got three goals to his name this tournament, and is also on penalties for the Sweden. But the fact he's playing against a Ukraine team, who are yet to keep a single clean sheet yet so far, yeah, all of the goals are coming for him and for me. Sariba is a more of a risky pick here, saying he didn't actually start Spain's first two games of the tournament, like, oh dear. But with two assists and a goal in his last game which he did also start and play all 90 minutes of i do reckon he's earned himself a start here croatia are a tough team though but their defence is probably wibbly wobbly and Spain have actually created the most XG out of any team so far this tournament so definitely worth a risk for him for me. Berardi played in the first two games for Italy and got two fantasy assists in those games so should be a good one to start here against Austria. Now at his price playing for this Italian team there's no point even arguing it. Just just get him in and let him do what he does. Yeah, yeah. Then finally, Damsgaard, who is mainly only here because he is a cheap winger for a team that is actually the favourite to go through. And you never know, Denmark could actually go quite that far. So if we could have an attacking winger for them, then why not get him in? Yeah. And that is the midfield actually done. So if you notice, every single one of these geezers right here are all very, very attacking wingers or playmakers for their team, but also are very good fixtures right now in terms of scoring all the goals and getting me all the points. And then finally, we forward on to the forwards where oh a boy these oh yes <laughs> where the fellas i've gone for are, are these where we've got cristiano ronaldo too memphis the best rapper the pie and karim gokart the benzema ronaldo is the top scorer in the tournament so far and plays a belgian team who just defensively are just no, no at all, are they? <laughs> now, Portugal are a team that could, in fact, go all the way and win the tournament, even with this tough run, you know? So how can you say no to the absolute goal-scoring goat, Ronaldo? Memphis Depay has got two goals and two assists to his name so far, playing against the Czech Republic this week. 
Now, Netherlands are actually favourites by quite a bit to win this game, and also the next game, no matter who wins. So with that, I gotta go for their main goal scorer and their penalty taken here. Memphis, he's got to be in. And then finally, Karim Benzema. France play Switzerland this week, but also, it's France-like. Uh, would it really be a shock if they went on and won, won the entire thing? Uh, I don't think so, no. <laughs> but I have actually gone for him because I think he will keep the penalties that he's been on for the France, and also pretty much been their main man to score the goals in this tournament as well. So that is why he is in. And that is actually the team done! Well, hey! Um, for now, like, things will definitely change. You need to follow me on Twitter and neither me and FC, but yeah, yeah. For now, this is it. And that is my team selection for the round of 16. Where we've got Spinazzola, Depay, slash Ronaldo, slash De Bruyne, Benzema and Forsberg for the captains on each different day. We've got the Triple Italy with double defence there. We've got Triple Netherlands and the double France. And then a bit of everything elsewhere to spread everything out as well. With the only players I've got in my team that are actually playing against each other are the Ronaldo and Kevin De Bruyne. Where I think no matter how that one goes, I can actually see both of them getting quite a lot of points anyway. But my thinking is whoever gets knocked out there, I can just downgrade them and spread the money elsewhere and get a much better team anyway so uh, hey so we are ready we are prepared lads going for the easier fixtures this week but also looking ahead as we look ahead to potentially finish first in the world could it happen it could actually happen it's not even a joke it's not a drill it could happen so thank you all for watching and remember <laughs> don't be a cheeky scrub subscribe to nathan bacon right now <laughs>